Sunday Q&A. Okay. As you can see, we got a bit of snow. Every Sunday, we answer your questions that you leave here on this YouTube channel. Leave them in the comments below. I'm gonna have some fun with slow-mo today. Mary has a few cow questions for us. Mary wants to know, are we planning on selling Luna? Not right now, Mary. Uh, right now our plans with Luna are to get her to the point where she is bred and has a calf and milk. Full circle of milking life. The circle of life. You know, why did we go with a mini jersey instead of a full-size jersey? Full-size jerseys are bigger. Duh. Full-size jerseys eat more. We don't have very good pastures and we don't have that much pasture. So having a mini jersey meant less hay that we would have to buy, less supplemental feed we would have to get in general, and she would be easier on our pastures and help us produce better pastures over the years. Right now, she's just the perfect size for a homestead. I love mini jerseys! I told you I was gonna have too much fun with this slow-mo. Finally, Mary wanted to know why we don't just pasteurize our milk and sell it. Here in Connecticut, we don't have to pasteurize. We can actually sell raw milk. We can even do a milk share. So the pasteurization thing, not necessary. So why don't we sell milk? We're using all of the milk we're getting from Ladybug. She's a perfect size for our family and our needs. Even though it is legal in the state to do, you still worry someone might not treat it the right way and make themselves sick. And it's just a bunch of stress I don't need right now. Will Smith wants to know, can you breed the Cornish cross? Well, this is a story all about how we got Cornish crosses. I don't know where I'm going with this. No, you can't breed Cornish crosses. They're a hybrid wind. No, they're a hybrid. Hybrids don't breed true. So no, you can't breed your own Cornish. Plus they get so big and fat that just, you know, big fat chickens, they can't, you get what I'm saying. Mr. Potato Head wants to know, for a beginner, should you go with ducks or chickens? Chickens. Hands down, start with chickens. They're easier, they're cleaner. Ducks have a lot of benefits over chickens, so why don't you get the chicken thing down? Yeah, sure, go for ducks. Made the vlog today. Benji wants to know how much our processed chickens sell for each. Benji, a meat chicken costs me generally about $10 to raise, $5 per bird to have processed. That's just basic costs. I still need to pay for a coop over the lifespan of the coop. I still need to pay for the insurance to have a farm business, all those added expenses. And I have to think about my time investment. So I charge $25 to $30 per chicken. Yeah, I know, a lot of you are like, what? Crazy, yeah, I don't sell many chickens. That's why I don't really focus on doing meat birds as a big enterprise. You might live somewhere where it's cheaper, you might be able to find cheaper feed. So, you can apply my numbers to what you're doing. Hope that helps, Benji. I paid my plow guy with bacon. It's my dad. Okay, uh, Gary wants to know how I felt the first time I butchered chickens myself. And I already answered this question one time, but I, I wanted to do another take at it because I don't think I, I hit the nail on the head. You know, I'm in the middle of this like, get questions answered, pow, pow, pow. I want to take a second. This is a really, really good question. And because life, life is something that is sacred. Even if you're not a spiritual person or a religious person, 
uh, you can acknowledge that life is special. Most humans who aren't complete sociopaths will recognize that fact, that a human life is, is valuable, and, and an animal's life is also valuable. I do not believe the two are equal. I get comments sometimes on this channel from you know, angry people who want to save all the animals and do everything they can to save the animals, and they leave angry comments about things they want to do to me because I butcher my own chickens. Somebody told me they want to push me off of a cliff and watch me fall and watch me fall and watch me keep falling and keep falling. People like that are you just crazy. I'm sorry I'm going to say it. You're crazy. But animal life is still something that is precious. And one of the reasons we decided to raise our own animals is because we understand that life is a precious thing and we believe that all life should have the best life that it can. And that's what you got to focus on when you decide to butcher, when you decide to raise your own animals for meat, you have to focus on life and not death. Because here is the thing, whether you're a meat eater or a vegan or whatever, I don't care what you are, you can acknowledge this. Everything's going to die. You're going to die. I'm going to die. All the animals on my farm are going to die. Being a vegan doesn't stop animals from dying. Being an animal rights activist does not stop animals from dying. Being a small farmer doesn't stop animals from dying. They're all going to die. No matter what you do, no matter how many donations you give to the ASPCA, all those dogs are going to die. Death is a great equalizer. But here's the thing. I'm gonna wait for the wind to pass. Okay, so here's the thing. People who give to the ASPCA, people who are animal rights activists, small farmers like me, big farmers, all those people who love animals, you can make a better difference in the world. You can do good things. And that revolves around the life. So if you decide to raise meat chickens, you're gonna give those chickens the best life they can have because you're gonna be doting on those chickens and caring for them and making sure that they're well kept and that their coop is clean and that they got water and maybe you'll even interact with them and they will have a very nice life. Then at the end of that process, you will kill them and it will not be easy and you will feel sad and uh, your heart may be heavy. It's not an easy day. Butcher days are not easy. The mood on the farm is always Ooh. down here somewhere. But on those days and on the meals afterward where you're enjoying the feast that you help provide for your family, you can hold your head up high and be proud knowing that you gave the animal the best life it could have. You can't stop that animal from dying, but you can make sure that it has an amazing life. That's what motivated us to do this. That's why we still do it. And I hope, Mr. Gary, that maybe you'll consider trying it because you'll have a better respect for what you're eating. You will not waste any meat. I promise you that and you'll be able to hold your head up high like I do, knowing you're taking responsibility for both the death and the life of the food that you put on your family's table. And that's a really big deal, and it's a big motivating force for us. Thanks for watching our Sunday Q&A. If you don't wanna miss out on any of the stuff we put out here, daily videos or podcasts, sign up to the email list. YouTube does not share all our videos with all our subscribers. The average video gets about 2,000 people to see it, but every Friday I send the whole email list all our videos so you can decide whether you want to watch them and not some computer algorithm. Thanks.